So this is the second part in the video series on hominoids and hominins. In order to look at some of the fossil evidence that we'll examine in this video, we first need to take a few minutes to talk about what actually defines a hominin. The way that scientists usually identify them is through what is called bipedalism, the idea of them walking on two legs. Uh, this is thought to have evolved before the more complex brain structure and even some of the teeth and other facial features that we usually associate with individuals in the hominid group. So if something walks on two legs, that's like the number one criteria to get it in this category. The ones that we're going to be talking about mostly in these videos, or in this video rather, they're referred to as Australopithecines. These guys fall into the genus Australopithecus, and they are similar to modern people, but they're not that closely related to us. Remember, we're Homo sapiens, so in order for something to be closely related to us, as far as classification is concerned, it has to share the same genus name. So Australopithecus, all these groups, they're the ones that are most closely related to humans, but not in the same genus. So we'll take a look at some of the fossil evidence for individuals of this group as we work our way through this video. The first fossil we're going to talk about is referred to as the Tang Child. And uh, this fossil was discovered in Africa in 1926. And it's uh, not quite as complete as the next one we're going to talk about because it was really only just a skull that was found. But we'll talk about some of the significance that came from this in a moment. Uh, the classification that this one ends up being put into is Australopithecus africanus. So it was discovered in Africa, and it's in the genus Australopithecus. So the name comes together and makes sense for us. Uh, there was some debate about this fossil when it was first discovered. Scientists were not sure if it was truly a hominin because they were saying that they weren't convinced that bipedalism evolved before some of the brain structures we're seeing. Because um, the thing with the, the Tang child and everything in Australopithecus africanus is they have relatively small brains and their bodies are actually fairly small compared to modern people. So what we're seeing here is this transition where they're definitely smaller than modern people. They had more ape-like brains and jaws, but their teeth and limbs are more similar to what we see in modern people. So the teeth and limbs, along with the idea of the bipedalism, them walking on two legs, is enough to get them into this homin uh, hominid group that's more closely related to us. The other piece of fossil evidence that we're going to talk about is Lucy. Uh, Lucy is probably one of the most famous examples of an evolutionary fossil because it's so complete. Uh, for starters, as far as the discovery goes, Lucy was found in Kenya in uh, 1974. So the uh, reason this one is so popular and it's often referenced just by the, the simple name Lucy is that it's the most complete Australopithecine fossil that has ever been discovered. Uh, we'll take a look at the actual fossil in a moment and you'll see that it's pretty complete. Most individuals they're finding like maybe a pelvic bone or just a skull or parts of the arm. With Lucy they found quite a bit that was all um, it's still in, in fairly good condition. Um, as far as the size of Lucy goes she was about the size of a chimpanzee but the hip and knee indicate that she walked upright. So again, that's what gets uh, her into this hominin category with the other individuals that are in the Australopithecus category. So it's uh, definitely the most complete example of um, Australopithecus africanus that's been found. Uh, this is the, the classic image of the fossils that they discovered. So you can see they found a fairly decent amount of the skull and the jaw, uh, many of the ribs, good structures in the arm. Uh, they also found half the pelvic bone, a good portion of the femur, and then parts of the lower leg. So this is enough where they were able to go back and kind of reconstruct what Lucy would have looked like. The thing that's nice about hominins and other vertebrate species is that we have what's called axial symmetry, which put very simply means that if you took somebody and you split them right down the middle, like directly between their eyes, we're symmetrical on both sides. So like your arms on both sides are laid out the same way, like the bone structure is the same. So because of that, they can kind of figure out and predict what other parts of Lucy would have looked like. 
For example, we have about half of her pelvic structure. So you'd be able to go through and estimate what the other half of that pelvis would look like because it's going to be symmetrical to the side that we already have. So the neat thing is you end up getting examples of models that were made where they use the information that we already know. And I like this one because it represents the things in like this dark brown that are specimens that we actually found, whereas the other things that are shown in white are things that were put in based on the symmetry that we know vertebrate species have. So for example, like this side of the pelvic bone has been filled in because we know this side. This femur has been filled in because they know about that femur. So it's, it's a neat way of scientists using some technology to give us a better idea of what some of these early people would have looked like. One of the things to look at with Lucy is that even though she has a very human-like pelvic bone, and we'll examine that more in a second, she still has very, very long arms in relation to the rest of the body. Uh, the arms are actually longer than the legs, which is something that we do not see in modern people, but we definitely see in many individuals from the Australopithecus category. So there are definitely a lot of major changes that go on between Australopithecus and then individuals with the genus Homo that are more closely related to modern people, but this is a very important transition in our way moving from some hominoids into hominins that, that are more closely related to uh, people as we know them today. Uh, the last thing for us to look at is the way that Lucy would have compared between a human skeleton and a chimpanzee to give you an idea of some of the similarities and differences. And uh, you can understand how Lucy, as a hominin species, is a perfect bridge between a hominoid, like a chimp, and then true hominins as we see with modern people. Uh, Lucy had a very modern style pelvis. The reason her pelvis is shaped the same way as our pelvis is that we stand on it upright due to uh, bipedalism, whereas the chimps have a very broad flared pelvis because they're hunched over on all fours. Uh, the other thing that you'll notice is the skull of Lucy is actually far more chimp-like than it is for modern people. You can see the front part of the skull is more developed in people. This provides room for a part of the brain called the prefrontal cortex that we'll talk about a little bit more as we, we move forward. Uh, but Lucy has like the very pronounced brow that we think of having uh, with chimpanzees, and her, her brain uh, just isn't quite as large as what we're seeing with modern people. So Lucy is very much a bridge between some of the higher level hominoids getting us into some of the more basic kinds of hominins. Uh, the next few videos will focus on where modern people came from. We'll look at the fossil evidence that we have for individuals from the Homo genus that are similar to us. And then we'll look at the transitions that led up to us finally having uh, modern people on the planet. So thank you for taking the time to watch this one. Make sure you answer the questions at the end of the video.